Now, before you start. This match will have a special change in rules. Niza told them, looking at Team C, for this match, you are able to attack the children, but you are not allowed to harm them. The entire class looked at the principal in confusion. Am I stupid, or isn't that the same thing? Kaminari asked. You are stupid, but yeah it does sound like the same thing, Jiro said. I'm afraid I don't understand sir. What do you mean by this? Ida asked his principal politely. That you will have to figure out on your own, Nisa said with a small sadistic laugh. Well, we're fucked. Shinso thought. Izuka looked at Urarika, who was deep in thought. I wonder if she figured it out. A bit later in the fake city. Team C had been walking through the city for a few minutes, and still had yet to see the child. Which was weird considering that from what they'd seen these kids weren't exactly hard to find. But despite this, Jiro looked extremely nervous. Jiro, what's wrong? Shoji asked her using one of his arm's mouths. I can't hear them, Jiro revealed. You can't hear what? Shinso asked her. Those monsters. Shouldn't there be a ton of them around us or at least a few miles away, but I don't hear anything. It's completely silent. Jiro said, thoroughly unnerved. Maybe they are waiting for the child? Shoji theorized, before looking at Urarika. Urarika, do you know who the child we're facing might be? Everyone looked at Urarika, and the ninth wielder paused as she considered what she was about to say. Well, I think I might know, but I'm not sure. It's better than nothing, Shinso told her. At least we might have an idea what we're going up against. When the principal said that we can't harm them, but we can attack them, maybe he meant that even if we attack them, harming them won't be that easy. Achiko speculated. Two of the kids had quirks that made them almost impossible to hurt them. Fu and Sansan. What do you mean, impossible to hurt them? Jiro asked, her eyes widened with alarm at the thought of facing an invisible enemy. Not impossible, just really, really hard. Said a voice behind them. The three of them immediately turned around and saw Fu standing there, with his typical blank expression. Fu. It is you. Achiko said with a bright expression on her face and relief filling her voice. Hi, Urarika. It's nice to see you. Fu greeted in his usual monotone. It's been a while. Back in the observation room. Wait a minute I know him. Mina shouted out, pointing at Fu on the screen. Why you do? Izuka asked, looking at the pinkette in confusion. Yeah, I saw him in Kiba's videos. Toru exclaimed excitedly. Wait a minute. Are you Kiba's dad? Is someone gonna fight Kiba? Well, uh, yes, and um, and kind of. She is here and she will be part of the exercise, but you can't really fight her because, well you can't attack her. Izuku explained nervously. That's amazing. Mina and Toru had stars in their eyes, excited at the prospect of meeting their favorite online celebrity. Wait, if you watch Kiba's videos then why didn't you recognize any of the other kids? They're in her videos too. Izuku asked. Oh we only just found out about her, we watched a few videos but we didn't see anyone but her Fu, Toru explained. But I can't wait to watch the rest. So have you seen Fu and Kiba's quirks? Izuku asked hopefully. Nope, I've only watched her gaming stream. Toru revealed. I saw Kiba's quirk, but not Fu's, Mina admitted. She has a dash. Please do not tell the class about her quirk. I would like to keep it a surprise if possible. Niza told her. Sadist. Went through the minds of most of the students after hearing that. Izuku just sighed in disappointment. He had hoped that at least one person would have seen Fu's quirk. Because he was well aware of how grotesque Fu's quirk could be, and it tended to make things complicated. It was one of the reasons that Kiba's channel was often described as Gapmo. On one hand, you had Kiba's adorableness and super endearing personality, then on the other hand you'd see her rip Fu's head off and a fountain of blood burst from his neck stump. It put a lot of people off. They've been really nice so far so hopefully, nothing goes wrong. Izuku crossed his fingers. Back with Team C. You haven't visited in a while. Fu pointed out, still talking to Urarika. Hee <laughs> hee, yeah I've been really busy. Aizawa sensei gave us so much work. Urarika sheepishly complained. You should come over, dads, let's talk about that later. Fu realized that this wasn't the time or place to be talking about this. Ahem. Surrender heroes. You're surrounded. The team looked around and saw nothing. Kid do you know what the word surrounded means? Shinso asked the child. Yup, Fu answered. We do. And then, Jiro's eyes widened. Guys, I hear something. Below us. Then the ground started to shake. 
And that's when the Grimm suddenly burst from the ground underneath them, surrounding the team completely. There were three kinds of creatures, all brand new to the teens. One of them looked like a giant centipede, that towered over them, even with some of its body still underground. Parts of its body would rotate in a complete circle, suggesting a less than simple anatomy. There were some small creates that didn't look like any animal they'd ever seen before. The best one could describe it as if an alligator wore armor and instead of having four legs on the top and bottom parts of its body, just had two big legs in the middle, like a T-Rex without arms. And the last one was just a giant, worm the size of a very small building, with a huge gaping spiked maw. All in all, there were five centipedes, twelve of the small creepy things, and one massive worm. Oh, they can go underground. Of course, they can. Shinso growled. Focus on the girl with the purple hair, who ordered. Ha! Huh, Jiro yelled in shock and horror. Why me? Rah! The creatures closed in and went to attack them. Jiro plugged her earlobes into her boots and blasted the grim in her direction with a wave of sound. The creeps were blown back by the wave, the centipedes were stunned for a moment but didn't seem too affected. A centipede and two creeps charged at Jiro from behind, intent on attacking her. Shinso went forward and threw his capture tool around the two creeps, and slammed them into the centipede's moving blades where they were then eviscerated. Achiko jumped at the centipede head, and touched it, using her new ability to increase gravity, to cause the beast to crash onto the ground. Meteor Kick Eurarika charged up to 7% of one for all and came down on the centipede with an axe kick to the skull, crashing through the bone and into the soft black parts. As the grim faded away, six creeps ran at Jiro, three on both sides of her. Shoji charged in and knocked the three creeps away on her left, while Jiro blasted the three on her right with a sound wave. Why is he after me? Jiro shouted at Achiko, as the whole team grouped up. I don't know? It doesn't make any woe. Suddenly Achiko was grabbed by the leg by a large black tendril and dragged away from her teammates. This tendril came, not from the Grim, but from Fu himself, his arm being completely covered in the inky black substance. Fu brought Achiko in front of him, holding upside down in front of his face. We haven't seen each other in a while so allow me to induce Kyosei. Say hi. Suddenly the inky blackness overtook Fu's face and replaced it with a pure black, one with white eyes and sharp teeth. Rah! Wah! Achiko was thrown away from the rest of her team by Fu's tentacle. Fu's body was then covered by Kyosei until the boy underneath could no longer be seen, and then he charged after Achiko, running on all fours like an animal. Just when I thought he was a normal-looking kid, Shinso remarked. Back in the observation room. So is that his quirk? Siro asked Izuku. No, the black inky stuff is actually another one of my kids, Izuku revealed. Wait what? Shouted a good chunk of the class. That, black goop, is a, kid? Kaminari's jaw was hanging. Yes, his name is Kyosei, and please don't call him black goop. Izuka sighed. He didn't blame him for calling Kyosei that. It wasn't the most flattering thing to call a child, but it wasn't inaccurate. Kyosei's quirk is called symbiote. His body is composed entirely of this black liquidy substance, which allows him to enter into people's bodies and form a bond with them, turning them into a host. This host will gain numerous physical advantages such as enhanced strength, speed, durability, etc., as well as the ability to use Kyosei's body itself as a weapon. Mizu explained, looking at the amazed faces of his students. However this comes at a cost. While bonded, Kyosei will begin to feed one's internal organs until the host has died. It will also cause the host's emotions to become overwhelming, to the point where the host no longer knows how to handle them, which in theory would often resolve in the host going insane until they die. The looks of amazement that had been on the students' faces when they heard of Kyosei's benefits turned to horror and shock when they heard of the price. Wait, 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 wait. Then why does that kid have him? Sato was the first to ask the question that was now on everyone's minds. Well I assume this foo, has a quirk that would negate the drawbacks of bonding with Kyosei. Alright. Momo asked, hoping she was correct. Very astute of you, young foo's quirk makes him, while immortal may not be the right word, it's rather complicated to explain so let's just say it makes him an unkillable zombie, which is an oxymoron, but that is the best way to explain it, Nisa said. So long as he consumes enough meat, he will be able to regenerate from any and all injuries. He is unable to physically feel anything, and his emotions, while he still has them, are muted to a degree. So he's the perfect host, Tokoyami concluded.
The class calmed down, for the most part, some of them were still a bit squeamish about the thought of someone's organs getting eaten. W.Y. not just, not give Kyosi I a host? Mina asked. I doubt it would be that simple, Todoroki responded. He said that Kyosi I feeds on the organs through the bonding process, implying that he needs to bond in order to survive. Very good Mr. Todoroki. You are absolutely correct. Niza happily praised his student. Without a host, Kyosi I will die. Meaning that there was no other option than to find someone like Fu. There was a moment of silence as the class had to let that information sink in. Back with Team C, minus Achiko. The three remaining members of the team did their best to hold off the attacking Grim, but without Achiko there wasn't much damage they could do to them. The creeps weren't that bad to deal with but the centipedes with their spinning blades were completely unapproachable by the students and all they could do was avoid them. And then there was the worm. The worm was far too tough for them to hurt, and its ability to dive underground served to make fighting it an even more futile effort. Thankfully Shoji and Jiro were able to detect any underground attacks, but avoiding them proved to be easier said than done. This is pointless, Shinso said as he slammed a creep into a centipede's head using his capture tool. We can't beat these things without Uraraka. We need to regroup with her. How though? Jiro asked as she ran away from a centipede. There's too many of them. And they're underground. Anytime we try to get away that worm will just pop up and stop us. Shoji said as he gave a three-armed backhand to a creep. Well if they're underground, then we need to get into the air. Shinso looked up at the nearby buildings. We need to get to the rooftops. Great idea, how? Jiro asked. Shinso threw his capture tool around the waist of both his teammates. You have to push us up there with your quirk. Or at least far enough for me to get us up there. Jiro looked up at the closest building, and then back at her two teammates. If she could blast them up far enough into the air with her speakers, then Shinso could use his capture tool to swing them over to a rooftop and hopefully out of the reach of the Grim. But that was a big if. At least my heart is pounding, Jiro thought. She didn't have much time though, as the Grim started encroaching on them once more. Jiro couched down and faced her, speakers towards the floor. You know, if this doesn't work we're fucked right? Well if we stay here we're pretty fucked too, so less sass and more sound waves, Shinso told her. Jiro held her breath. Boom! She let off the biggest sound wave she'd ever let off, and it launched them into the air, with Shinso's capture tool keeping them together. And they made it. Two-thirds of the way up. They made it two-thirds of the way up the side of the building. Fortunately, they had made it just far enough for Shinso to throw his capture tool around a railing on one of the rooftops. The three of them swung to the side of the building, and were now, out of reach of the creeps and centipedes. Oh god, I can't believe that worked. Jiro released the breath she was holding, as she hung by Shinso's capture tool, along with her other two teammates. Looks like we're out of the danger zone for now, Shinso said. Jiro's eyes suddenly widened, as she heard something that gave her chills. I wouldn't say that. It's the worm. It's coming up and fast. It might be trying to jump. Shit. Shinso knew what he needed to do, he grabbed his capture tool and tried to climb up the side of the building. However, with both Shoji and Jiro weighing him down he wasn't making much progress. Shoji saw this and reacted accordingly, grabbing both Shinso and Jiro and taking hold of the capture tool, and climbing up much faster. A few seconds later they had made it most of the way there. And then, rah, the worm burst from the ground, leaping into the air. The three teens froze in terror as they saw its spiky moth getting closer and closer way too quickly. Fortunately, though, the worm stopped a few feet away from them, as gravity finally took effect and forced the worm back to the ground. The teens were flooded with an intense sense of relief, knowing they were finally out of danger, for now. Shoji pulled them to the rooftop, and Shinso unwrapped his capture tool off of them. Alright, now let's go find Uraraka, Shinso said. Can you two locate her? They both nodded and Shoji made some extra ears, while Jiro started moving her ear jacks around. Meanwhile at the fake park, with Achiko. Crash! Uraraka was thrown through a tree by one of Fu's tendrils. She rolled across the dirt until she stopped when her body smashed into a rock. Ah! Uh, Eh, Achiko grunted in pain, as she slowly tried to pull herself off the ground. Fu dashed a few feet away from her, giving his opponent a menacing leer. Wow Fu, you, really got a lot stronger since we fought last time. Achiko felt a strange feeling while fighting Fu and Kyosei. She'd kind of felt bad for him before. The boy was the only one in the group of kids that wanted to be heroes, that didn't have a super offensive quirk. 
Heck technically speaking his quirk wasn't good for defense either since regeneration didn't defend you, rather it just kept you from dying. The poor boy would get tossed around and dismembered and beheaded and even used as a weapon by Kiba a few times. But with Kyosei, Fu was now a significant threat, and Achiko felt kinda proud. Even if he was kicking her ass. Thanks. We may not be a strong Kiba, but we have a few tricks up our sleeve. Q raised his arm, and it shapeshifted into a hammer. Sansen taught us this one. Fu raised his hammer arm up, stitching it high into the sky before bringing it down on Achiko. Achiko quickly dashed out of the way as the hammer slammed down onto where she had been standing, breaking the ground it smashed into. Yurarika changed at Fu, with one for all speeding her up. She didn't get too close, however, as five tentacles grew out of Fu's back and flew at Achiko. Achiko had to suddenly stop, and then move back as she jumped out of the way of various tentacle swipes. As one of the tentacles jabbed at her, she dodged it and grabbed onto the tentacle, intent on making Fu heavier. But before she could get all five fingers on it, the tentacle shifted around in her hand, covering it and keeping all her fingers separated, so her quirk wouldn't activate. Did you think we didn't think about how to deal with that? Fu told her. Kyosei's black goo spread from Achiko's hand onto her arm. Achiko struggled to try and escape Kyosei's grip, but even using 7% of one for all didn't help her. More tentacles wrapped around Achiko's body, trapping her in a cocoon of black. This is my win, Yurarika. Fu raised Achiko high in the air. Yurarika! Fu paused and turned to look behind him, and saw Shinso, Shoji, and Jiro, running towards him. So you escaped the grim. Fu shot out more tendrils from his back at the three students. All three of them managed to jump out of the way but had to keep running as the tendrils kept chasing them. How long are these things? Shinso shouted as he kept running. Why don't you use your quirk to stop him? Jiro asked her fellow purple-haired classmate. I tried. It didn't work. Shinso told her. Right. Most of Fu's brain functions are dead. So Shinso's quirk doesn't work on him. Achiko thought as she kept struggling inside of Fu's cocoon. And then, much to her surprise, she managed to move her hands around and touch the cocoon with her fingers. Ha! Huh. Suddenly all of Fu's tentacles smashed into the ground, as did his body, as gravity suddenly tripled on him. Achiko's cocoon smashed into the ground and was reduced to goo by the impact, freeing her from its hold. What happened? Did he get distracted and lose focus? Achiko speculated, while she quickly pulled herself out of the goop. Yurarika! Achiko looked up and saw her team running towards her. Guys! Yurarika met them halfway, finally reuniting with her teammates. How'd you get away from all the Grim? We used the rooftops. All the Grim moved primarily underground so they couldn't follow us once we got up there. Shoji explained. Nice! Achiko praised giving her team the thumbs up. But, what so do now? Unlike the other two, this one seemed to be leading the attack, so we may have to force him to surrender, without hurting him. Shoji theorized. I think since this is an exercise, just threatening to hurt him would make him surrender, given that most children would give up under threat of harm. That's not possible, Fu can't be harmed, or even feel pain. His quirk makes it impossible. Achiko explained. Well, it doesn't seem like he can do anything now that you've increased his gravity, Shinso noted. I wouldn't be so sure. The four of them looked at Fu, who had retracted his tentacles into themselves, and pulled himself off the ground, using sheer strength to resist the increased gravity. He's a lot stronger than he looks. Achiko told them as they got ready to defend themselves. And faster to so be careful dash. Before she could finish what she was saying, Fu lunged at Jiro tackling her to the ground. Ah! Why are you going after me? Jiro tried to pull Fu off her, but this was to no avail, as the increased gravity made Fu heavier and harder to pull off. Fu raised his fist to punch Jiro in the face, and that's when Jiro raised her earlobes in defense. Rah! Kyosei roared out in panic, and Fu jumped off of Jiro as quickly as he could and continued to back away from her. Huh? Jiro paused in confusion. What just happened? Shinso asked in equal befuddlement. He seemed frightened of Jiro's earlobes. Shoji pointed out. Come to think of it, when he sent the Grim after us, he focused on Jiro. But if he can't be harmed so what's he afraid of? Shinso turned to Achiko for answers. I, don't know. Izuku never mentioned a weakness to sound, unless, Fu isn't weak to sound, but Kyoshi I is. Achiko realized. Fu lunged at Achiko, but the girl jumped back to dodge it. Can you guys pin him? Jiro asked her teammates. Yurarika, can't you increase his gravity more? 
It's tied to how much strength I'm using, and I'm already at my limit. Achiko explained as Fu kept jumping and swiping at her. Shoji charged at Fu, tackling the boy and then wrapping him up in his arms as they rolled on the ground. In response, spikes grew from Fu's body and stabbed into Shoji. Ak! Shoji cried out in pain as he released his grip on the boy. Shinso threw out his capture tool at Fu, but the boy just ducked out of the way. He's still too fast. Shinso said. If I could wrap him up then we might be able to win. Achiko looked at Shinso's capture tool and then at Fu, and she got an idea. With enhanced speed, Yurarika charged forward and two of the ends of Shinso's capture tool. She ran at Fu, and Fu lunged at her. Achiko jumped over Fu and wrapped his body up in the tool. Fu tried to use his strength to get it off of him but found that his bindings were surprisingly durable. Achiko ran around Fu, continuing to wrap him up in the capture tool until the boy was completely restrained. Ugh! Rah! Fu tried to use Kyosei's shapeshifting to make a tentacle or something to help him escape, but the moment the tentacle got more than a foot away from his body, it splattered against the ground due to the increased gravity. Jiro quickly ran over and pointed one of her speakers at Fu's face. Give up or so help me I will blast you. Fu stopped moving for a while, and after a few seconds, Kyosei retreated back inside of him. We surrender.